I have a, a grandson. Uh, he's a mean little devil, too. I love him. And, uh, I, I refuse to, to be known as Grandpa, even to him. That seems one turn of the screw or one twist of the knife too much. So I always contrive to make him have as good a time as I can whenever he's with me. And I have been infinitely rewarded by the fact that he does not call me Grandpa or Grandpa or Grand or any of that. To my grandson of all the world, <coughs> even though only to him, I am known as Fun Man. <laughs> uh, and uh, what Fun Man does usually is tell him long stories in verse in which he is the hero. And here is one of them that was published as a children's book uh, last October. Uh, and I invented a lot of outlandish episodes about big game hunting featuring uh, James Byard Tuckerman Dickey, which is his name, but nobody calls him that. They call him Tucky or Tuck, uh, in which he kills with his pop gun that I gave him one Christmas, a double barrel pop gun, <laughs> all the big game animals in the world. And when he goes to sleep, I know, he, he, I know and he knows that he's going to go on another one of his famous hunts. And he'll tell you all about them, too. And then I make up another episode. And so on, it goes on and on. Uh, but when I began to reflect on this, it seemed to me that this is the very essence of childhood, and that somebody will tell them that they're doing these things. And they really do believe that even if they, they, they believe that it, even if they don't do these things, that they, that they will do them when they go to sleep. As Gerard de Nerval said, the dream is a second life. And nobody believes that any more than a child does. And maybe it is so. I don't know. But uh, this is a poem about a five-year-old hunter of all the animals, big game animals of the world, all kinds of strange animals. Some of the names are real animals, some of them are made up. Uh, and it's written in kind of doggerel rhyming verse. Part of the fun of reading a poem like this to other people is for the audience to, to anticipate the rhyme word. See if you can do some of this with me. Uh, some of the rhyme, it's very easy, because some of the rhyme words are, most of them are the words that you would expect to rhyme with that word. So this is, but not all of them are that way, but most of them are. So you can help me out with some, if you will. It's also really a poem about that kind of magical time when, in childhood, when they do believe these things. And, and uh, nobody gets hurt, but it's a lot of fun. You take off with your double barrel pop gun, you rub a knife, it's your Christmas present, and God knows what you can't do before you have to come back to the old suburban house the next morning when you wake up. So help me out on the rhymes of these and see how, see how we come out. He shot the two-horned rhino with his double barrel gun. He shot the dusty python for sleeping in the <laughs> that applause for you. He shot the bullish elephant, the king of pachyderms. He shot the bristling cougar and fed him to the He shot the grinning crocodile in the Ganges, thick and brown, while it gobbled up a newsboy in the middle of the Alaska knew his courage whenever he came back, for he'd shot the gruesome grizzly and the bumbling Kodiak. He shot the mountainous King Kong, whom everybody knows. He was holding up a kicking girl and pulling off a Some little innocent girl in the audience a couple of weeks ago said he was holding up a kicking girl and pulling off a nose. <laughs> You didn't see the original version. <laughs> he shot the bearded Barbary goat as it sat looking wise, and creeping into Eden, shot the bird of grass. With his knife hung from his studded belt and his double barrel gun, Tucky the hunter hunted on through the suburbs of the sun. 
where flamingos put the moon out, then lay down in the weeds, and night sprayed burning egrets on the ever-swinging reeds. Where the moon plunged like a red-eyed bull, then plunged, uh, charged like a red-eyed bull, then plunged into the sea. Tucky Tucky hunted everything, but I hope not you and me. He shot the snapping wolverine just as it sallied forth. His great gun bammed, and that was it for the demon of the north. He shot the one-eyed Yangi, and then he bagged the bow, then finished off the triple of the Yangi Bongi bow. <laughs> he shot the native Boomalong with its eye of nightshade blue, and the yellow Malay monkey for doing nasties in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> must know some of the same language, huh? <laughs> At Samarkand, the whirling stars all whistle wild and pale, and so they do off Durban, where Tucky shot the whale. He shot the smiling devil in flames of blowtorch blue. The angels came out dancing, and Tucky shot them too. <laughs> <laughs> like clay pipes in a gallery, he shot the trembling stars. He shot the burly Binturong, but he never shot at cars. And he shot everything there was, but they weren't really dead. All summer, winter, spring, and fall, he shot them in his bed. For a pop gun has strange powers, and the animals know this. It wounds with simple love alone, with the tension of a kiss. And when the pop gun fires, a loving life for the bow is born in the heart of the hunter a hunter five years old. The animals would rise and wait in treetop and in den and watch the west red sun go down so Tuck could hunt again. When the real sun sank as the earth rolled, Tuck's own moon and his sun came out and he'd set out with his knife and his double gun. One night he started out alone for the coast of Palawan and shot the grisly tiger shark and the ever-dying swan. He shot the scented meadow log. He slew it for its song and put the song in his pocket as he hunted right along. And when his mother came for him before the break of light, she wondered where he'd got that song, so mournful and so right. She wondered where he'd got that song that sounded like noon flight. She wondered where he'd got it in the middle of the night. And the bee saw rose up singing as she took Tuck in her arms, and everything was banished that comes from night's alarms. The animals and fish were there, and birds flew through the room. There was nothing but creation in night's suburban gloom. And the beasts were glad to be there that fell to Tucky's gun. They were glad to be a part of that great nocturnal fun. And they were grave and stately, but laughing with delight as Susan raised up Tucky in the middle of the night. The hunt was almost over, for Tuck was growing up, and he'd never have any more to drink from inspiration's cup. But while he was a little child, for a time that wouldn't last long, he held within his pocket the meadowlark's light song. And the animals rose up singing when Susan held him near. All the beasts that Tucky shot were seen both dear and clear. And his mother Susan then most strangely began to sing, the song of the single meadow lark and the song of the cobra king. She sang of strange night wonders meant just for mother and son. She sang as only a mother can sing to her one and only one. And the animals sang with her. They sang of all the stars. They sang on the streets of the suburbs of Venus and of Mars. They sang in mystic double tongue, the tongue of man and beast. They sang of far west buffalo and the jungles of the east. And Susan lay down singing, very far from night's alarms. His mother lay down singing in Tucky's valiant arms.